Oh, hi. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to talk about internal use today um, and uh, for essential oils. And it's highly controversial within the um, essential oil using community. Um, I, I won't get into all the, the various actions because it makes the video too long and I'm really trying to keep this short. Um, so, but there, there is a general no, never, and yes, go ahead. And, um, and then there's extremes on both of those two sides. Um, and, uh, I, I find this side is gen generally kind of anecdotal and, um, a little bit fear mongering. And I'm being gracious in saying that they're they're very fear mongering, <laughs> um, and that's a valid assessment. Um, particularly because so much of why they fear using essential oils internally is anecdotal and not um, not uh, scientifically proven, um, and so they don't have a substantiated claim for why they you should never use um, essential oils internally. And that's just honest. I've I've extensively looked on both sides and um and so and I th and I think that's not good because that side prevents people from um exploring stuff that could be good for them and so I don't I really don't like this side I don't like their attitude um this side I will empower you in your journey, but sometimes can throw caution to the wind. So it's really my, my first kind of point to discuss is that it's really important to look at both sides because you can get something valuable from both sides. This side will empower you. And that's a good thing because I think people should be empowered to try um, essential oils internally. Um, and this side will give you cautions that will help you do it safely. Um, and so if you can just take from both arguments and do your own thing, I think you're going to be good to go. Um, that's advicey. So I'm going to now take this moment to say I am not a trained aromatherapist. I do not have licensing. I've never taken a class in that way, you know, in an official capacity. Um, I am just a mom who uses essential oils with my husband, myself, and my children. And I've shared essential oils with other people and seen some really amazing things. That's a story for another time. But, um, um, I have seen enough to be really convinced of their validity in our lives, um, but I've taken the time to research all the kind of different voices that are out there to see what is good for us. And um, uh, so take whatever I say as just an opinion that you can add to your bucket list of things that, no, not bucket list, but your bucket of information that you're taking in about essential oils. I should not be seen as authoritative on this subject at all. And please do not base your entire essential use around anything that you hear just me say. You need to go do research. Um, and in that topic, I will say that um, if you are risk averse and need everything spelled out for you ahead of time so you know exactly what to expect essential oils are not for you you have to look at yourself as a lab rat testing things out to see if they're they're going to work for you um because uh, right off the top of my head vetiver knocks me out for like 24 hours <laughs> Vetiver, I have to be very careful with vetiver because it really, really wipes me out. It makes me very tired. It's good if I can't sleep. Vetiver is great, but but I have to be really careful with it. I know people who say the exact same opposite. They say that vetiver wakes them up and makes them go, oh, you know. And so you, essential oils are powerful, potent, but but they're also chemically complex and we're chemically complex. And so there is nothing out there. I don't care what each group says they know about essential oils. There is nothing out there that is going to be definitively what you're going to experience just because a group of people over here experienced it or a group of people over here experienced it. So you have to be willing to be a lab rat, um, your own lab rat. You cannot be risk averse and use essential oils in your healthcare um, or wellness. Um, <laughs> Um, hate the language policing of our FDA mm, issues. Um, 
And then uh, risk averse. Oh, and then you need to expose yourself to as much information, as many views about oils as you can, but that's not enough. You need to invest in several good books about essential oil and essential oil usage. You need to invest in more than one. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think the other ones aren't about using essential oils, they're just about the science and stuff. At least seven or eight books by various authors connected to various companies, connected to various lines of thought that help me to properly use essential oils. Probably have spent a good hundred or so dollars, no, more than a hundred, probably a good $200 on literature for using essential oils. If you aren't willing to put at least $40 into buying one really good book or, or a couple of good books, then you shouldn't be using essential oils. Honestly, you just shouldn't because they're chemicals and they are, I know we're supposed to use wellness, like, like as if we're, you know, eating good vegetables and fruits and our pyramid of, of um, daily food intake, but most people use essential oils as drugs, things to help them heal when, when, they're, when there's something wrong. So if that's how you're gonna use essential oils, you need to get more than one book about how to use them properly and safely. And I will another time kind of give my favorite books. Hold on. So one of my favorite books um, is Evidence-Based Essential Oil Therapy. Therapy? Yes, yeah, Therapy. The Ultimate Guide to the Therapeutic and Clinical Application of Essential Oils by Dr. Scott A. Johnson. Um, really good book. As far as I know, not connected to any essential oil company, um, or um, he would be of the, the mindset of kind of um, um, uh, putting out there that there's a new uh, kind of emerging American method of using essential oils as opposed to what's traditionally been out there, French, British, and German. Um, so I, I really like this book, very balanced. It's my favorite book of all of my books. Um, has uh, a lot of a lot of essential oil, a lot of information about the essential oils. Has a lot of information about kind of normal things that you would use essential oils to deal with, and some really abnormal, crazy left out and left field stuff that you're like, I've never heard of that. Um, so if you're really kind of dealing with some weird issues and you wanna try essential oils, this might be the book for you. Um, about $40, $40 or so, but th this one is my by far my favorite. I think you can get it on Amazon and um, you can get it at uh, aromatools.com, which is one of my favorite places to buy stuff for your essential oil usage. Though there are other places too, but I, I really like them. So anyway, look into this book, really good book, very balanced. Um, and he's going on evidence base. So in the back, real quickly, I'll show you in the back, page after page, after page, after page, after page, after page, after page of the, um, the studies he's referencing in order to give you the information that he's giving you. Best book, best book, very balanced. He makes the very good point that internal use is something that is valid and he gives you the very, very cautious, cautious amounts that you should use um, and good kind of things to go along with it. Again, I don't know who he is. So somebody may be like, oh, he's connected to this or he's connected to that, What else? Do your thing. He. His book is the one that has, by far and away, um, been the the most centrist, balanced view of essential oils. Most closely resembles the conclusions I've come to after looking at all of the views that are out there. So um, I recommend that book. You do what you're going to do. Do research. Come to your own conclusions. Um, so uh, one of the cautionary things. Okay, there are all sorts of ways to take essential oils internally. Um, and another caution is, is I never, I have a five-year-old, a nine-year-old, and a 13-year-old. 
never, I never use essential oils internally with the five-year-old, never. He's way too little for that. They're very, very potent. I, there's never a case for that. Um, the nine-year-old, very sparingly, very sparingly. The 13-year-old, um, you know, we all use it sparingly. I don't use it. It's not the first method I go to. Um, usually topical use is how we use it, uh, essential oils here. Um, we don't use them internally very often, but she's kind of on the same, you know, my 13-year-old is the same. I kind of view her the same way as us. There are different recommendations for that age group in that book, but um, basically the same as us. Um, so uh, one of the cautions though, you know, one of the big freak out things is that, oh my gosh, you're drinking the, the essential oil with water, which is um, <clears throat> huge taboo on the side. No, 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 don't ever do that. This side's like, yeah, do it. It's good. It's no problem. And I'm kind of in the middle. <laughs> um, the contention on this side with that is that oil and water doesn't mix. So when you put oil into the water, it rises to the top and then that potent essential oils hitting your sensitive inside skin um, undiluted, which is a valid point. Um, they go into a contention about damaging the mucous membranes. Again, anecdotal. Um, this side over here has doctors that say, no, it doesn't. And they've given the, the scientific view of it. Um, but you know, again, but on the side, kind of almost an unwillingness to acknowledge that there are anecdotal evidences that it can cause damage. So again, taking from both sides and mushing it into the middle to see if we can come up with something that is both explore, you know, something that I can use to help me, but also use it safely. <laughs> So, um, kind of my aim. And so I did a lot of research on this a while back and um, took like $100 at one point and bought like all of the milks, um, you know, skim, 1%, 2%, whole milk, goat's milk, all the vegetable milks, you know, all the nut milks and stuff like that, rice milk, and tested how much the fat content made a difference in keeping the oil mixed in with the liquid. Um, and then I bought like syrups and honey and like stevia syrup and that type of thing and agave syrup and maple syrup and, and, and see if any of those things helped it stay mixed in better. Um, and really to varying degrees, some of them did, I think almond milk was the, the milk that kept it most mixed in. Um, but none of them really did super great. The only thing that really, and, and then the syrups were all kind of a, a fail on this side, except for honey. Honey was the thing. And somebody, you know, a chemist had told me ahead of time that that was going to be the case. And I said, okay, well, that's great, but I'm still going to test everything out for myself so I can see it and then tell you. And um, so the, the honey was the thing that worked the best because it's a surfactant. And so it keeps the oil and the water mixed together. So um, I don't personally drink essential oils on top of like cold water, just adding it to my glass of drinking water. I don't do that because it does. I, I experience the burn on the inside of my mouth, even with oils that are not considered hot oils. And so I don't do it that way. Um, the other way that I will often, will often take essential oils internally if we're using the oil directly is we'll put it in with honey, like a spoonful of honey and mix it in, or we'll put it in a, um, an empty vegetable capsule and um, either dilute it or not, but take it internally that way. But if I am good, there are occasions where I do want to drink it, um, almost like I'm making my own tea, although that side will tell you it's not a tea. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We understand that technically it's not a tea. I'm saying tea as in a hot drink with plant material in there. And even though it's not the, the material, it's the, the, you know, the chemicals from the material, get what I'm saying. So, you know, nobody watch this and pick me apart. Um, <clears throat> okay, so what I do, and I'm using a clear glass because I don't know that the camera's gonna be strong enough to pick it up, um, but I'm, I'm gonna try. So what I'm doing is I've got a clear mug and I put somewhere between like a fourth of a teaspoon and a half a teaspoon. I just kind of a little glob in the bottom of the cup. Okay, so 
If you, you feel like you have to measure, I'd say about a fourth, probably about a fourth of a teaspoon. I don't know if you can see that. A little glob in the bottom. And then I'm using bergamot. Um, I particularly like bergamot if I have a sore throat. Um, so I'm going to put a, one drop of bergamot into the honey. One drop. Okay. There we go. And again, if a second drop happens, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, and then I'm going to mix the drop in to the honey. And it will kind of um, thicken up a little bit. It'll kind of turn it into a little bit of a paste at the bottom. Not very much, but it just, it does change the texture slightly. Okay, and so just kind of mix it up. And then I pour, and bergamot is lovely. It's kind of like a sweet lemon. Um, they source it from, the place I buy it from sources it from Italy, I think. And I think that's pretty much where you'd source it. So then I pour in water. And this has been sitting here for a while, so it's not hot anymore. It's kind of lukewarm, but... And then continue to mix it all in. And this keeps the oil from rising to the top. And keeps the oil mixed in to the water. So... Yep, I think it's all mixed in now. Yep. Um, and it adds a little bit of sweetness to it because essential oils smell amazing, but almost none of them taste good because <laughs> it's really, you know, chemicals, condensed chemicals. So it adds a little sweetness to it, so it tastes a little bit better. Mm. And there's no burning because the essential oil is all mixed into the water. It's not rising to the top and hitting my throat undiluted. It was diluted in the honey, and it's now staying mixed in with the water. I don't know if you can see. It's, it made the water a little cloudy, and there's nothing forming on the top. The oil is not, well, I mean, it does kind of a little bit after a little bit, but it stays mostly um, diluted and, and mixed in with the water, which is what honey does. And it's a really, really good way in order to get your essential oils um, internally, if you're gonna use it internally, so, and through a, a, a drink. So, um, I hope that was helpful to some of you. Again, not a healthcare professional. Don't take my word for it alone. I'm just demonstrating a method of internal use that might be helpful to some of you as you do your own research to see if you want to do internal use at all. Okay, um, thank you for watching and have a good day.